time, the words from John Place, husband and father, letting the world know he survived coronavirus after being on a ventilator for nearly 20 days. John, in the land of the damned, is very fortunate. He tested positive along with his entire family after his 21-year-old son went to an event with friends where he contracted COVID-19 and passed it on to the rest of the family. John's wife, Michelle Zimet, joins us now to share their story. Thank you for taking the opportunity uh, to talk to us. How are you doing? How's the rest of the family? Thank you so much, Chris, first of all, for having me. Um, we're definitely, we're, we're much better now. You know, we're hanging in there. It's been quite a, a an emotional roller coaster, to say the least. It's like living a, a real nightmare, you know, the past month. But um, I'm doing, you know, doing the best I can, taking care of the kids here and just keeping them safe and keeping them here in the house, of course. And just our six-year-old daughter, especially, is the one who I think was hit the hardest because she's a daddy's girl. And every day, when's daddy coming home? Where's daddy? Um, you know, I miss daddy. I just want to see daddy. And we would FaceTime him, you know, as often as we could. So it's it's been hard, but we're definitely, again, better now that he's off the ventilator. And we're just so very grateful and blessed uh, that he is alive, as yeah. you heard. Uh, thank God. Thank God for that. And thank God for how you look and sound, too. I mean, you know, you, you, you're obviously doing well. It doesn't hit everybody in the family the same way. Um, the person I'm most concerned with is your son, uh, the 21-year-old. He must feel horrible does he understand that this is just how it goes is his head and his heart uh, is he in a good place he definitely is you know we definitely talked about this you know quite a bit and he knows that i did try to express to him you know every time please wear the mask you know social distance try to wash your hands take a shower when you get home whatever he could and he's, he's a grown man you know he's an adult so he has to make his own decision he knows that he didn't choose wisely and again it's very hard you know kids are kids and i do get it they want to hang out with their friends they want to chill and you know they get very comfortable once they're in that setting they're sort of lax and they take off the mask and now they're drinking and then you know they're in each other's faces pretty yeah. much so i express to him that in no way shape or form is this a blame game I'm not trying to shame my stepson. We love him very much. And he feels very guilty. And he's very afraid. And he was very scared of what was going to happen to his dad. He never thought, none of us thought in a million years that this would happen to us. I mean, you see it on TV and you say, wow, I can't believe it. it you know, but until it hits home, right. it becomes, you know, and no one deals with that. And they think they're invincible and they just want to hang out and party and they live in a bubble. And if it happens to them, you know, no big deal, a little cold, a little flu, but that's not the case, you know, man, and you spread it to one or you come home, unfortunately, and then we all catch it. And then if you have underlying issues, you can see what happens. You wind up in a hospital on a ventilator and God forbid, you know, the worst outcome. So. Now, what are they telling you about your husband? Uh, he got off the ventilator after a long time. I mean, thank God. I mean, you, you know that he's in rear air uh, right now in terms of getting off after that period. Uh, what are they telling you about where he is in terms of how far out of the woods? You know, the doctors, for the most part, they said, you're a very lucky woman that your husband pulled through this. We, you know, usually 89% don't God. come off the Thank God. Especially when they have diabetes, high blood pressure, and a lot of, you know, other underlying issues. So when he came off that ventilator, it was like, wow. And they were all ecstatic. They're like, a miracle. It, it had to have been a miracle, you know? And so we're just so grateful for that. And it's just amazing that he's pulled through right now. I mean, he's far from out of the woods. His breathing has improved. You know, he went from a ventilator to a BiPAP to an oxygen mask, and now he's breathing a little bit better, but he's he's weak. He can't even lift his arm. He can't move his legs. He says that they look like twigs. You know, it's four weeks laying in a bed with no movement. You can only imagine the muscle mass that you lose, and you have to start from scratch. And now it's rehab, physical therapy, occupational therapy. We've got a long road ahead, months of, you know, therapy and rehab, and He's a fighter, you know, he's going to pull through and God bless, thank God that, you know, we're, we're on the right track. So we're very grateful. Now, another reason that people don't want this, um, like there are plenty enough already. This ain't cheap uh, if you get sick. Uh, you can't work. Um, certainly in your situation, you weren't able to work. You didn't know when you were sick and when you weren't. You had to take care of the kids. You had your husband in the hospital. Uh, the yeah. medical costs. Yeah, yeah, you can get a test for free, but what's happening yeah. in that hospital isn't free. Uh, and insurance is always on the side of paying you slow and asking for money fast. How much uh, have you guys had to come out of pocket? 
Uh, well, so far we haven't gotten the bill just yet, but I've heard from quite a few people that have experienced what I'm going through, that a couple weeks even in a hospital, in the ICU on a ventilator, starts at about 500,000 and up. So if we're looking at close to a million, I mean, we don't even know, I don't have a clue. You know, I have, we haven't worked since March. Our industry was hit very hard, you know, with the pandemic. We're both in the event industry. So needless to say, we've just been living off unemployment, you know, which is near a couple thousand dollars. So now hit with this and then rehab and possible other supplies that we need to provide for him when he does come home in a month or so or two down the road. You know, it's a lot. So luckily, I've been fortunate that my best friend set up a GoFundMe for us. And, you know, we've, we, we know people from all over the world, and we've been blessed that people little by little, you know, have been donating, and we're just so grateful. And it's really going to help us at least get ahead somewhere and at least pay the bills at the house and do what we can at this point because, you know, we're going to have to take care of that when he gets home. So it's going to be my next full-time job, but I'll do it gladly. Listen, we all tell each other for better or worse, right? Um, and uh, you're in that. You're in that now. And I, uh, I wish you the grace and strength to uh, get through it. And we're very selective about talking about GoFundMe pages. And I know people are going to say, like, well, well, you know, 